Hey, and welcome to AudioTech's fifth tutorial on Cubase 6.5. In this tutorial, I will show you the different types of snap modes available in Cubase. When you work with a project in Cubase, it's almost impossible not to use snapping at some point of the process. After this tutorial, you will understand and know how to use all of the snapping modes. See those crossing vertical and horizontal lines all across your project? This is called a grid. Now let me start by explaining you what a grid is. A grid is a two-dimensional structure built up by intersecting vertical and horizontal lines. And this is used to structure and organize all your content. And we all know grids from our notebooks in school. Like in math, it's much more readable and organized when the numbers you type in follows the same spacing indicated by the lines. Basically, it gives you an idea of dimensions. In Cubase, you'll see the grid overlay at all times. Like here in the project window. See how there's vertical lines going from left to right. There's also horizontal lines separating the tracks. In the vertical axis, there's two different kinds of lines. The bold ones indicate the start of a new bar. And notice how the line is drawn exactly from the bar in the timeline. Now notice the three almost invisible lines in between. Those are drawn out from the beats in the bar. So in my current layout, notice how there's a fat line from the first beat, indicating the start of a new bar. And then there are subtle lines going from beat two, three, and four, and finally followed by a bold one indicating a new bar. You can also see the lines going through the audio clips. And that helps us seeing what audio material is going on on which speed. Say I wanted this clip on top to start directly on bar 2. If I drag the start of the clip to bar 2 and press play, notice how the clip now is placed on bar 2, but the musical material, the audio waveform, first really kicks off a bit later. So I'd then move it just a bit to the left until I see my waveform kicking off exactly at bar 2. And likewise, if I wanted my audio to kick off on beat 2 in the bar, I'd then move the track while looking on the overlapping grid lines until my waveform kicks off at beat 2. If I wanted to move my audio material to the following 8th note, like to the offbeat of beat 2, I'd have a hard time doing it with the current grid layout. Because, as you can see, it's only showing me one line per beat. How fine your grid is can be easily adjusted. In this example, I need to do it in order to move my clip per 8th note. And this is how to do it. Check the top view of Cubase to the right of your tools. I want to draw your attention to the second grey box from the right. Here's an icon looking like a grid and then either the text bar, beat, or use quantize to the right of it. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to use quantize. And that's just for the purpose of showing you some stuff, but don't be concerned about it for the next minute or two. In the far right, you'll see something like 1 slash 4 or 1 slash 1, etc. It's called quantizing presets, but this is also the place you choose how fine your grid will be and how many beats your clips will snap to if you selected use quantize in the gray box to the left of it. It'll be a much better explanation if I just show it to you, so uh, follow along in this example. In terms of the grid, as you can see, I'm now having a line separation of one line per beat. I could also say one line per quarter note. If I pick, let's say, one slash eight, Notice how the grid changes. It might be very hard to see, but now an additional third vertical type of line has been added for each eighth note in the grid. It's much more visible in the lines going through an audio clip. And now it's very easy for me to move the contents of the clip so it kicks off on, let's say, the offbeat of B2. As you can probably imagine, Changing from 1 slash 8, or a quarter note, up here in the presets to a higher or lower value will change the layout again and add additional lines for higher values, like 16th notes. 
And if I change this to 1 slash 1, or a full bar, check out how the three lines in between bars disappears. And now we can only visualize and move in relation to full bars. And you can also change the grid spacing to show triplets or dotted nodes. Now let's go ahead and change the tempo. For this I'll open the transport panel and the shortcut is F2 by the way. I'm then going to change the tempo mode from track to fixed. And now I'll simply write in a new higher BPM. Right. Notice how the grid has been scaled down. And this is simply because the distance between bars and beats is now shorter. And so, bars and beats are getting closer together. Okay, so why is all this important? I'll tell you why. If I were to go and zoom in on my clips all the time and drag them around to the exact point of a line in the grid, it would take me an incredible amount of time to work in Cubase. And if I know that I want my clip starting at beat 2 in a bar, what's the point of spending so much time when it can be done so much easier? And that brings me to the stuff you clicked on this video to learn about. It's called snapping. Very easily, you can snap your audio clips to the grid so that they will stick to the grid spacing you selected. In that grey box second from right, you can switch between either snapping to bars so that your clip will only snap to each first beat of a bar, and then beats, so that your audio clips will snap to each beat in a bar, or finally, use quantize, for snapping to the values you select in the box to the right. And this is also where you can get so much more fine control over how your clips snap to the grid. So my recommendation is, always have it set on use quantize. And in the far right grey box, and let's call it the grid snap spacing selector for this example. If 1 slash 4 is selected to the top right, that means that your audio clip will snap to every beat or quarter note in the grid, if you turn on grid snapping. But you can also snap to other stuff, uh, but, but let's start with the grid snap. In order to turn snap on or off, look for the icon on top. It's kind of looking like two arrows facing a line. This is called the snap toggle. And if it is highlighted, that means that snapping is on. Click it and it will be grayed out, like the icons beside it. And that means that snapping is off. Let's try with an example. I'm now going to head to the grid snap spacing selector on the right. And then I'm going to switch my spacing to uh, 1 slash 1 or a full bar. And I'm then going to ensure that snap is on. I'm now going to move this audio clip to B2 in bar 3. But look what happens, it will only snap to bars. Then I'll just switch off snap, right? No, instead go back to the snap spacing and change it to 1 slash 4, or a quarter note, in order to snap to beats or quarter notes. Now look how my clip instead snaps per beat. And now it's incredibly easy just to hover my mouse around beat 2 and let go. And even if I change my project BPM back to 120 BPM, it will still remember that my clip starts on the second beat of bar 3. Still, however, look how the audio material kicks off just a tad from the start of the clip. I'm now going to cut off the start up until the audio waveform and move it again to beat 2 in bar 3. For this I'll be using the object selection tool and simply drag from the left towards the right to make the start of the clip shorter. But wait, check out what happens. All tools also snap to the grid. Now, I could then either change my snap spacing to another value like 1 slash 16 or 16th notes, and then snap to 16th notes. But that wouldn't be fine enough. I want much more precise control. So in this case, I'll turn off snap on the snap toggle. Drag from the left to right with the object selection tool, up right around the place I see some stuff happening in the clip. I'm now going to zoom in just a bit using my shortcut and fine tune it. So when I'm satisfied, I'll turn back my snap toggle and now I can move my audio clip to B2. 99 out of 100 times when you work with the snap toggle, you'll be snapping to the grid. But as I mentioned, there's other snapping functions as well.
so let me show them to you. In order to switch the snap mode, check out the icon to the right of the snap toggle. It's kind of looking like a grid. And this indicates that you are currently snapping to the grid. If you click it, you can see a list of all the other stuff you can snap to. Let's start with the grid relative. It's so much easier to simply show you what it does, instead of explaining it first. So check out how this clip starts somewhere in between the beat 4 in bar 1, and then the beat 1 of bar 2, somewhere in between there. It's not snapping to any grid. See how it's moving and snapping, but it's not snapping to the lines, it's dead only to the grid spacing value. Now with the normal grid snap, this clip would simply snap to the next grid line. However, with grid relative, I'll move this clip with the value of the selected grid or snap spacing directly from its current position. Next snap type is called events. And this one will not snap to the grid in any way. Instead, it'll only snap to audio clips around it. And remember in the previous tutorial on editing audio clips, I told you about how my term audio clips is actually called events in proper Cubase terminology. So with the events snapping type selected, check out how I can move the clip freely without any snapping until I come close to a nearby clip. It will then snap directly to it. Note however that it will also snap to clips on tracks on top or below of it. And as you gain experience using Cubase, you'll find more and more situations when this snap type will come in handy. Alright, so on to the next one called Shuffle. And this one is a really neat tool for switching stuff around. It treats your audio clips as if they were some sort of building block you can swap around. So let's try it out. And as you can see by the green line, when I release my mouse, this is where it'll put the clip and then push the one that was already there forward to the end of it. Right? So next up is a really cool snap type called Magnetic Cursor. And this will snap your audio clips to the cursor position in the timeline, and nothing else. So check it out. I can freely drag the clip, but whenever I get close to the cursor position, look how it snaps right to it. Sometimes you might already have found the exact location you want to snap to in the timeline with your cursor. And then with the magnetic cursor snap type, you can simply drag towards it to snap to that exact location. And this snap type is so functional that you can also use the other snap modes in conjunction with it. So your primary snap type, the grid snap, can also snap to the cursor position at the same time. You can find it in the snap types called grid plus cursor. And there's also an option for using it along with the events toggle. There's even the possibility of snapping to the grid, events and the cursor position at the same time. So the sky is the limit here. Personally, I almost always just use the grid snap. And if I then want more precise control, I'll simply turn off the snap. Again, I've set up a key command for it simply because I switch it all the time. And my key command is J. So find out what suits your workflow the best and remember the benefits of the different snap types. So two more things before we're done here. First off, you can change your timeline view from showing bars and beats like now, just to show seconds instead. Either right click anywhere on the timeline and select seconds. Or you can open your transport panel, shortcut F2, and then left click the little note to the right of the timeline position. Now you have the same options to customize your timeline. And now to the last thing. You can customize the strength of the grid line so that they become more or less visible. And here's how to do it. Open the file menu and go to preferences. And then look for work area under the category appearance. Click it and then you'll be able to adjust the strength of those lines by dragging the sliders. You're gonna be looking for the vertical line 1, 2 and 3. You can also adjust the horizontal line, which is the one separating the tracks. And Cubase even lets you make two layouts for the grid appearance. One for the project window, the one we are currently working with, 
and then one for the edit windows, which is the sub panels you haven't yet been introduced to. So that's very cool. And when you're happy with your adjustments, you can click apply, then finally OK to get back. And that's all for now in this snapping and grid tutorial. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next one.